In this lesson, we're going to talk about how you can build relevant inbound links in a natural way. So if you're just getting started with SEO, you might not know what an inbound link or a backlink as it's referred to is. So a backlink is when another website links back to your website. So it's an external inbound link from someone else's website. Not all of these backlinks are as valuable as others. So before we get started, there are some things you need to know. So firstly, never buy backlinks. I've seen and heard of a couple of people who've done this. They've gone off and purchased hundreds or thousands of inbound links to their website. The search engines have caught up, realized that this is basically spam and banned their domain names from search engine results. So don't do that. You might see a very short term gain and perhaps even get to the first page of Google or the top of Google. However, once Google realizes this is spam, your domain name is going to be banned basically forever. You would have to switch domain names and start all over again. So don't be tempted to buy inbound links. Secondly, the source of the inbound link matters. I've already touched on this in a couple of previous lessons, but to reiterate, the source of the link is so important. If you can get other authoritative websites within your business area to link to you, that is going to be a lot more valuable than having one of your friend's websites that is completely unrelated linking back to you. Next, the anchor text matters. Now the anchor text is the text that is used to link back to your website. And where possible, you should be asking sites that are linking to you to use the keywords and phrases that you want to be found for. The reason for this is because search engine bots are going to look at that link, look at the text and see whether that is relevant to the page that is being linked to. And as I've said throughout this series, all these little things allows these search engine bots to build up a picture of the content that is on your website. So with that being said, let's have a look at how you can start building some inbound links to your site. So as you can see here, I have done a search for coffee shops Brighton, which is one of the keyword phrases that we are targeting. And if you go down to the actual search results here, you'll see the first result is actually basically a linking site. And if we go and have a look at that page, you'll see that this is a welovebrighton.com site. So this site is doing reviews and linking off to interesting content. And this specific post is six of the best independent coffee shops in Brighton. So ideally, we would want to get our coffee shop listed on this page or listed the next time this site does a review of coffee shops. Now, they're obviously not going to be talking about your or linking to your coffee shop unless they know about it. So my suggestion would be find out who the author of this post is tweet them, email them, get in contact with them however you can and say, hey, I've just opened up a coffee shop. Next time you do a review, would you mind including my site? And the reason obviously is that a link from this site is going to be so valuable. Firstly, it's ranking number one on Google. And secondly, they're talking about all different types of events and coffee shops, restaurants, any sort of activities within Brighton. So a link from this site is going to be so valuable. So if you can get in contact with them, as I say, and try and get them to list your business on blog posts like this, then you'll be on the way to having some really good quality inbound links. So that's one way of trying to get some inbound links. The next one is have a search on Google and look for perhaps some forums or discussion sites that are talking about your business area. So for example, here there's coffeeforums.co.uk and on here people are asking what's the top five coffee shops in Brighton. Now you could go and post on this. Uh, you want to be careful not to become across as pushy or spammy. But if you join this forum and you post answers to questions, relevant content, be helpful, be a member of the community on here. What you can do is add a signature. And if we scroll down and find one, for example, here, you can add a link back to your website. So obviously, you don't want to do this in a spammy way, you don't want to get blocked on the site. But if you're an active member on forums like this and you're helping people out, you're posting some answers to questions, stuff like that, linking back to your site, they won't have a problem with that. But obviously the main goal for you is to start getting more and more inbound links to your website. And this is one great way by adding a forum signature with 
perhaps your business name, a little bit of information, and they link back, and then a link back to your domain name. And as I say, when you're linking back to your site, try and do it with some keywords in the link text. Here they've just used the actual domain name, perfectly fine, but they could have gone a little bit further and actually used some keywords that they want to be found for or that they're targeting with their SEO. So next technique is if we go to Twitter, I've got the RealMac software uh, Twitter account here. Make sure you're linking to your domain name in the sidebar here. Perhaps use some descriptive text in your bio. It all helps. Again, every time you tweet, someone clicks on your profile, they're gonna see a link back to your domain name. So just make sure that all of your social accounts have links back to your domain name. Okay, next up is Facebook. Obviously you'll want to set up a Facebook page for your business. This one here is Bond Street Coffee. They are a coffee shop in Brighton. And you can see here, this is gonna be relevant as well. It says Coffee Shop Brighton, and then just down here, they have a link back to their website. So again, this is just going to help with links inbound to your website. Next up, I want to talk about the newsletter page we have on our site. And if we go to Rapidweaver quickly, you'll remember that we have this newsletter sign-up form here. Now, this is just a dummy page. I'm not actually going to uh, set up the newsletter. It would take too much time for this series to show you how to do that. But one way of getting inbound links or people sharing your links or people sharing content on your site is to have a newsletter. So people sign up and you send them perhaps weekly or monthly email newsletters with links to the recent content or the recent blog articles that you've posted on your site. So two options for setting up a newsletter are, the first one is Campaign Monitor. They're very good, it's very easy to use, it's fairly cheap. I think they even have a free account if you only have a few hundred subscribers. I would definitely recommend Campaign Monitor, very, very nice system to use. And they will give you code that you can add to your website with a form on and they handle all of the sign up process for you. So you, you don't need to do any coding, you can just paste in what they give you and you'll have a sign up form on your site. The other option that is very popular is MailChimp. Again, MailChimp is a very easy to use system, definitely recommended. They'll give you all of the code that you need to add a newsletter form to your website and they'll handle all of the sign up process for you as well. I think they also have a free account for a certain amount of subscribers. And just to reiterate, the reason why I think you should have a newsletter sign up on your site is because if you followed the recommendations throughout this series and you've created a blog, what you'll want to do is be posting it perhaps once a week or however often you can. And then once you have a couple of new articles that you've posted, you'll want to email that out to your subscribers so that they know about that new content and perhaps they'll want to tweet about that, they'll want to share it with their friends, they'll share it on social media, whatever. You basically want to get people onto your site, reading your content and sharing that with other users. So for example, once we've written this top five alternatives to milk and coffee, perhaps the week after we send out a newsletter to everyone, they go and read it, they can then share it and that all helps with building up these inbound links to your website. And another benefit of doing these regular blog posts and sending out the newsletters and getting people to link to you is that it shows search engines that your website is fresh. You're constantly updating it, your site isn't stale, the information there isn't old, people are constantly talking about your website, they're linking to it regularly. You're posting new content to your site. All of this is commonly referred to as fresh rank and search engines use the freshness signals of links to judge how popular your website currently is. So if you only have links from websites from a few years ago and you haven't posted anything new, the search engines are going to start to think that your website is a little bit stale, it's not very popular anymore, people aren't linking to it, they aren't sharing it as much as they used to, so perhaps your site isn't quite as good as it used to be. So that is why you need to be posting regular, fresh quality content. Keep the fresh rank score up and keep people linking to your site on a regular basis. And you should, over time, start to see your site bubble up towards the top of the search engine results. So just before we finish up this lesson, I've talked about backlinks from other sites. 
you'll also want to be backlinking to your own site. So what this means is, and I've touched on this in a couple of previous lessons, is linking to your recent blog posts from the homepage of your site or from other pages of your site. And we've actually already set this up in the footer. If you remember, we added some popular articles here. Now we haven't updated the titles here, but the principle is the same. You want to be adding links back to your most recent and your most popular content on your site. So we've done that by, as I say, adding these links in the footer area of our website. However, we've also done it in, for example, the coffee page sidebar. If you remember, we created the um, sub pages here underneath coffee and we linked to them in the sidebar here. So these are all what I like to term as internal backlinks. So basically backlinking to your own site, making sure that you're using keywords and phrases that you want to be found for and linking to all the other content on your site. So before we finish up, let's go and actually update those blog post titles in the footer area. So we'll go to the code settings and the body tab here. And down the bottom, we'll want to update, do you have a milk allergy to the top five alternatives to milk in coffee? Now I'm having to manually code these links into the footer. Depending on the system you're using, you might be able to automatically get these to update every time you add a new blog article, or you might be able to sort them by popularity automatically. Doesn't matter how you're adding these links, just make sure you've got links to your most recent or your most popular articles somewhere on the page. And the footer is a great area for you to do this. And again, we need to update the espresso link. So we called that how to pull the perfect shot of espresso. And the brewing courses title was I've just forgotten. So I'll have to check the blog post, go to edit here, sign up for our barista training courses in Brighton. So back to the code. Now, Depending on how long the title is, we might want to shorten it for these types of links. So we could just say Barista Training Courses in Brighton, something like that. Doesn't have to be the full blog post title, just needs to include the keywords that you're targeting. Now obviously my URLs are incorrect here, so I'll just update those quickly as well. Make sure I have those correct. And this one we have how to pull the perfect shot of espresso. And I'll paste that in here. And again, I'll do the same for the barista training courses. And finally, not forgetting the top five alternatives. And let's see what we call that. Okay, so top five alternatives, milk, coffee. So as I say, you might have a system that could automatically do this for you. I've just set this up in the most basic way that I could just to illustrate the types of content that you want to be adding on your site. So let's go to preview, make sure that looks good. And we go down to the footer and yeah, now we have our three most popular articles. And as I say, these are basically internal backlinks going to the most popular and the most recent articles on your site. So that just about does it for this lesson. Before we finish up, let's publish our changes to the live site. So let's just check that our site looks good online. And if it does, we'll wrap up this lesson and move on. So we'll just check that the footer is all good. Yep, we've got our updated popular articles there. So as I say, that'll do it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next video.